especially with the engineering team for uh, John, James, Brian to be on with all creating a really nice working and learning environment. It's been a really nice four months, kind of sad it's coming to an end next week, but yeah. So today I'll be discussing what I have been, the main project I've been working on. So I was working with Omni with fabricating low cost disposable electrodes. Just before I get into it, I know that I've only met a few of you, unfortunately, with the lab. Maybe I'll get to know some of you a bit better next week. But a little bit about my background is I grew up in a legacy family grain farm. So my grandparents and great grandparents were the ones that came over here from Ukraine, broke the land, and we are continuing to farm that land still today. So in the picture, I've got my, my parents, but um, I have an older brother and sister that are very involved as well. Um, we all have our class one license, so uh, driving all the equipment uh, with the larger trucks. But sadly, we only have cats. So I was very happy when I got to go go out with some of the, the group with Yana, Ashley, and Bianca this, this semester to go out and see some of the sheep at the farm that we're, we're working with. But I am in my fifth year mechanical engineering, so I have one more semester left. Um, and then my free time, I enjoy being outside as much as possible. So hiking, soccer, volleyball, badminton, rock climbing, just anything that can get me out there. But I'll get more into what I've been working on. So something that Omni was working with was screen printed electrodes. So these are the ones that we've been working, she had been working with are from a brand called Hedrome Dropsets. So they operate with having their counter electrode uh, working and reference. So they're made to be low cost, disposable, easy, easily workable with um, micro volumes of a sample. And I put the dimensions there because that was very important when considering making them in lab. The reason why we wanted to try working on this project was uh, there are a lot of other reports out there that show that it's very easy to use them a lot of, with an inkjet printer for producing these um, screen printed electrodes. So you can modify the ink that so you can change the conductivity of it um, or change the size, um, really just make it flexible for what it is you're testing. Um, and something I was given when I had started with the, in the lab was that I wanted it to be the electrodes to have the same size as these um, drop sense electrodes so that they can fit into the connections that Omni had already been working with. Um, they can used to be able to remain in place on the substrate so that it wasn't flaking off when you're handling it or putting it in a solution or soaking it. As well, you need that consistency from electrode to electrode so you can get your uh, consistent results. And then when I was considering um, how to produce these electrodes, there were four different components that I had to go through. So that was choosing the substrate, the ink that was going to go on to, uh, ink that was going to make the electrodes, the method that was going the ink was going to be applied onto the substrate, and then fourth was the ink curing temperature and time. So that fourth one was a little bit easier. We um, when we purchased the ink, it was it had a data sheet telling us how long to cure the ink for. So uh, for that, it was 30 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius for both carbon and then with the silver, there was a bit more um, uncertainty because it depended on the substrate you were putting it on. But for us, it was, we just uh, had to go through a few tests and then eventually the, the same results, um, the results showed that it was just around the 30 minutes for that 100 degrees Celsius. So that one part was pretty simple compared to the, the other decisions we had to make. Uh, with the substrate, things we need to consider was the thickness. So uh, again, it needed to fit into those connections snugly for to ensure that good connection. Uh, it needed to be heat resistant because of that heat curing time. Um, and then as well, it needed to cure onto that substance, the substrate, and not flake off. So when I started this, um, this project actually began with a previous co-op. So Dylan, she had been working on this for only a couple of days before um, she ended up leaving. So she was working with this lower grade pet just to get an idea of the ink um, and how it was going to stick onto it. Uh, so this was following a report that had already manufactured electrodes. So you would take this pet, you would scrape sandpaper in one direction, and it would create these lines that the ink could fit into. Um, this was working quite well in creating that shape that we wanted, but then once we wanted to heat treat it, it started to bend and did not give results we wanted. So we had to move to a different substrate. The next one that we considered was glass. This was working well in when it needed to be heat cured. However, I needed to use a glass cutter in order for it to uh, be fit into those smaller shapes. Um, ultimately, it was a lot longer and just 
ended up breaking a lot of glass. There's also a few shards, but um, the best results we got was from a, a higher grade pet, so from Melanex. This was very thin material and needed to be doubled up with some kind of sticker sheet. But overall, it was the best substrate that we had found um, when I started uh, printing electrodes. Um, it didn't need any additional prep, like with the sandpaper or any kind of chemical adhesion onto it. So this is one that we chose to move forward with. The second thing we were considering, this is something that had already been chosen before I had started my co-op. So um, the carbon black ink, this was purchased. Um, it has very high viscosity. It dries fairly quick before like um, with the, the heat treating. And then uh, this is for our working and counter electrodes. And then the second ink that we were using is silver spray ink. So this is a very low viscosity, meaning I needed to use a different method for ink application. And uh, um, it was a lot more difficult to get that consistent layer by layer without having an ink trench printer, which is something that a lot of these reports were suggesting to use or they found it success in using. This is something that Bianca will touch on later is we considered using excuse me, uh, in-lab carbon ink production. So this used a combination of carbon powder and clear nail polish in order for, and mix them together so you could change that concentration for what you wanted. Um, this is ultimately, I'll spoil it, it didn't really work that well. Uh, it's something that we want to uh, consider in the future, but for the time being with our span, when we were in the lab, we decided to go for forward with the already purchased ink um, as it was just more consistent and less um, obstacles we had to go around in order to find that kind of the, the recipe for making these electrodes. So um, as you can see in the top right, um, with a high, higher carbon ratio that they had suggested using, there was a lot of issues I was encountering with the application. So it was flaking off, it wasn't adhering properly to the pet. Um, and so we decided we were considering lower ratios, but once I started testing this with this like voltometry, it ended up showing there was no consistency between electrodes whatsoever. And I have other graphs um, further in this uh, presentation that I can show you what um, the ideal ones that we were looking for. So the third thing I'll move into is how exactly I was looking to um, place the ink onto the, our substrate. So <laughs> again, no printer, we have a silhouette cutter. So a silhouette cutter is commonly used with crafts. So it has a blade you, and it comes with a, there's a software you can download. So you give it a certain pattern you want it to cut out and then you would feed it into this uh, little machine on a mat and it would cut out little these designs in, um, in whatever you wanted. So for me, I was using clear sticker paper. This, uh, the top row there shows the, the two, first two electrodes that was printing with the carbon screen ink. The second row there shows the silver ink that I was using for the reference electrode. Um, and then the third line um, is a cover so that I only had a certain amount of surface area of the electrodes being exposed for the solution. And then that fourth one is just that backing that I would place on the, um, on the pet so that it adds that additional thickness to fit step into the, those connections that the Omni is using. So what I ended up doing for placing the ink on it was just using a simple X-Acto knife as a scraper to go over the uh, this the stencil. And in order to get a more even application, I designed this little paint scraper device using 3D printed parts and a railing so that it would apply a very firm application onto the, the sticker. So I will show a quick video here of the cheap type speed. But it shows a process that I used where I would uh, have this already has the sticker on top of that pet. And I would very scrape it, scrape it down. Uh, I'd be <laughs> you had to attach it very close. Otherwise, I would notice paint would seep in through the sticker. So for here, I'm just using a toothpick for applying the ink, but eventually I started using more of a paint like scoop um, just to get more, um, more of the paint out easier. And then the next thing I do is grab that little stencil, the, the scraper on the side, and then just scrape it all the way through. So I do this around two times just to get a even surface. Um, just make sure everything is coated. 
but I will skip that and talk about the next thing I was doing. So another, some other papers were also using screen printing. So what screen printing is commonly used for is mass producing a bunch of the same image over and over again. So this is very commonly used in the t-shirt industry or also for any kind of electronic board printing. Um, the nice thing about this is you can give very fine designs. Um, and the, when I was tr looking into how I was gonna approach this, I purchased both a um, embroidery hoop and then I created a different, my own frame using just a spare gantry parts um, here in the, the lab. Um, and then it placed in a 300 mesh into both of these frames. The next thing was just I need squeegees. I um, played around with the different durometers. So that the, the hardness of the, the squeegee itself and then also I needed a photo emulsion um, for burning onto the burning the stencil on, and then a scooper for just applying the emulsion in a um, in an even layer. And this one I ended up just three D printing. So what the screen print printing process is is I first had to apply the emulsion. This needed to be done in a dark room because so, the emulsion ends up hardening when it's exposed to light. So I would let it dry in that dark room and then pull it out and place on a stencil that I made using electrical tape and placed in the design I wanted, which was for the carbon, like I was gonna use it for the carbon ink. So I placed on those, the working counter electrode on top of the screen, burned it for around 15 minutes, washed my screen. And then the third step was then to just print it. So for printing, I would apply a thin, apply a thin bead use the one of those squeegees to scrape off the excess ink. And then I would be left with the electrodes you see at the top right. So this result, this needed a lot of uh, small tweaks with creating the stencil for it to be very um, accurate with um, smooth lines uh, as well. I need to find a, a good method for applying that ink so that it was even and also it was sticking onto that substrate. And then the results that I'm showing here is using uh, CB. So I uh, have the three different ones, di different methods I've talked about today. So using that at-home ink, the and then the screen printing, and then lastly, just the sticker stencils. So with the nail polish, as I discussed earlier, there's just no consistency between uh, electrodes. With the screen printing, again, a little bit better results for clean, clean lines, but it's not showing any consistency between electrodes. And then at the bottom there, I show the sticker stencils. So each of these different graphs shows a different, what I call batch. So that's just the process it takes of me placing on that sticker, scraping the ink, and then taking off the, the sticker. Um, so like each of those separate um, times I would go through that. So I have three batches that are very, similar and quite identical and then i'll get the odd batch that doesn't show consistent results but still it usually varies case by case with how different it looks usually i've noticed this is due to sticker residue staying on the electrode or um, just if the ink wasn't applied in an even manner but overall the sticker stencil method is showing a lot of promise and so some of the next steps that i have here are just, there need to be a few more layers deposited onto that, um, the, the reference electrode. So for that, we just need to add in um, the, the sodium layer. And then the next one is a polymer saturated layer. This one, uh, following some of the reports, they mentioned it's 16 layers, but we are hoping only a couple layers will be required. Um, still not a, a the, set pro the process isn't established yet, but it should just be a very easy um, paint on. And then lastly, it's just to refine the method um, of the electro development, just to get some more consistent results, not only between electrodes, but also batch to batch uh, for more accurate results. Um, so just some conclusions and what I learned as a student within this lab, because this is my first um, time going through um, helping out with some research. So consistency is very tough to achieve in electrochemistry. I know I, when I started, I thought it was gonna be a lot easier, quicker process, but um, I noticed the smallest things would change the results drastically, uh, probably given for a lot of you in this lab. <laughs> um, and then also as well, the importance of iterations and just repeating your tests. I noticed there'd be a lot of day-to-day -day changes 
even when I thought I was doing the exact same process, there would be um, sometimes changes in results. And then as well, 3D printing was incredibly helpful. So thank you for Julia James uh, for um, getting those printers going and uh, helping me uh, learn a lot about 3D printing. But thank you for having me in this lab. Um, it was an incredibly uh, welcoming uh, group that I was working with. Um, again, got to go see some sheep. So I was very happy um, that day. But um, that's kind of the wrap up of mine. So I will pass it over to Bianca. Great, thanks. Uh,